Hi everybody, I am Pauza from www.c4d.cz and I would like to show you how to use the MoGraph X2 Deformer object. I know, other artists and mentors have made very similar tutorials, so you can find other tutorials showing the same topic as this. However, I am confident mine is much more comprehensive than others and it provides more techniques and is more animated. You will see. Okay, and right, I like the object look. Okay, let's start. Here's the original scene I prepared and it uses just a single adjusted sphere object. It's the same object that other tutorials use as well, but its topology is a bit different. And here's the main hero of the lesson, Domograph X2 Deformer. It's a very strange deformer because it can be adjusted by MoGraph affected objects. So, it's the key advantage of the deformer, because we can fully animate it using these effectors. So, it's a very nice object. Okay, I will copy the wool structure and create a new scene. And we can study the structure closely and play the animation. It's a very live object, as you can see. I like the inner movement, it's waving and so on. It's really very nice. Okay, let's start together. We will combine more objects together to achieve the same effect that this object has. Let's create a new scene and make a parametric sphere object. Change the current display settings, use a shading with lines. And check the object topology. The topology is the key aspect of the simulation. We want to use a very procedural approach. We don't want to model it at all. I want to use some effectors, deformers and so on. But the object still needs a suitable topology first. This proper use of topology is probably the main difference between this and other tutorials I have seen, because they usually use a wrong topology. Select the object and change the type choice here to icosahedron. This generates much more and uniform polygon size. Ok, reduce the subdivision level here, 12 or 13 should be enough, and select the object and convert it into an editable state. Ok, set the polygon mode. Aside all polygons the object has and activate the Extrude in a tool. Be sure you turn it off the Preserve Group option. And scale the current selection down. This will create the basis of virus arms by the way. Use the Live Selection tool, press the Ctrl key and click to the edges mode here. It will convert the current polygon selection to the edges selection. Use the V key, choose the Select menu and use the Inverse Selection command. Use the selection menu again and use the shrink selection command. That's perfect, because we got a selection we really need. We will subdivide the selection and remove many narrow polygons we generated with the exit in the tool. We will clean up the look of the object and convert many polygons uh, of it into quad angles polygons. We will get much nicer mesh. Ok, use right mouse button, use the edge cut tool, turn off the create angles option here and click hold down left mouse button and move right. Create two new points and that's all. Use the shift key and change the cut size and go back and use the polygon mode again. Use the selection menu, choose the set selection command and save the current selection. Select all polygons of the object and use the untriangulate command. Done. It's really very easy. Ok, we got much nicer mesh than before, but we need to spherify it a bit, because if we check an outline of the object, it still looks very straight and that's not nice. Ok, select the object, press the shift key and create a spherified deformer as a child of the object. Set the deformer, set the strength value to 100% and reduce the radius to 100 instead of the default value. That's all. It looks much better now. I like Cinema 4D Deformers. But uh, I will convert the current state. Set the sphere object, use the model mode, right mouse button and use current state to object command. Select, select the original object and we can delete it. Use the polygon mode again and select uh, the set selection tag of the object and restore the third selection. Use the execute tool and move new polygons inside the shape of the object. Use execute inner. Be sure the selection tag is still selected and save the selection again. Set selection command. 
it's still very easy. Almost anyone knows how to use the Matrix Extrude tool. It's a very nice and powerful tool, especially when it comes to organic modeling. But it's pretty hard to control it. We can parametrically and non-destructively adjust it and so on. For those who don't know the tool, let's show it. Okay, let's create a new scene and a new object. It can be a cube for instance. And we can select a polygon here and choose the Matrix Extrude tool and we are talking about. Okay. And this tool executes a selection, but it executes it several times and affects it by other values as well. So we can adjust an execution repetition by the step value. The movement controls an execution offset. The Z value represents a normal offset. Here is the scale settings and rotation is here. We can adjust all these values independently and we can use some variations as well. Two variation modes are here, initial and per step. It can be pretty helpful because we can generate a very nice organic shapes as I said before. We can vary all these values and get a very random look. Just play with the tool settings. It's really very funny. Just use it for free for tree modeling for instance and don't forget the tool supports angons as well. That's all about the matrix extrude. The MoGraph extrude object is very similar to this tool as well, but it works differently of course. It doesn't offer any variation effect inside the object, but it has another very powerful feature. Go back into our scene. Be sure you have saved the selection and it's still here. I select the object, press the shift key and create a new MoGraph extrude object. It splice the chart of the sphere and it extrudes all polygons of the object. No worries, just set the deformer and go to the object tab and here's the polygon selection link field. Drag and drop the tool is affecting just the stored selection we need. It's very important. Uh, let's inspect the transform tab. We can control an extrusion movement here. I just scale per step and rotation value is here. But it doesn't offer any variation settings here. Simply the object doesn't have it. Okay, I will revert it back and don't worry. Before we seriously start with the MoGraph Exit object, we will adjust the sphere with uh, another deformer first, because I don't like the perfect spherical look of the object. Uh, it just doesn't look natural. So turn off the Exit first, set the sphere, press the Shift key and create a new displaced deformer. It splices as a child of uh, the sphere as usual. Be sure it's placed on the first position of the level. It controls an execution order and we need to deform the main object look first. Set the deformer and continue to the shading tab. Use the custom shader here and choose a noise. Open the noise settings, scale it up a bit and uh, here's an animation speed. It's very important to increase the volume a bit. We will parametrically animate the object. Okay, now play the animation. It's very nice. I will scale it up a bit more. And that's it. Perfect. Select the displacer, go to the object tab and adjust the height value here. I like it, it's very nice. It's very easily animated. Okay, we can activate the MoGraph extrude object again. It's much better, as you can see. We can adjust the extrude settings, but we will adjust them differently. The object will be fully animated and we will adjust all these settings parametrically, of course. Okay, select the MoGraph extrude, be sure the object is still selected and use the MoGraph menu again. Choose the Effectors menu and select the Step Effector. The step effector can affect instances of all extrusion steps according to their order. The first step should be somewhere here on the left side. 
here is the second, here is the third, and so on. We will use the step effector and design arms we made by the MoGraph extrude object. Ok, select the effector and go to its effectors tab. The step effector is loaded here as you can see. Anyway, we can place here any effector we want, just use drag and drop. Hold on, I will delete it here and use drag and drop and use it again. Ok, select the extrude object, go to the uh, object tab and increase the steps value here. Adjust the effector. Use the parameter page and increase the scale value for instance. We can generally change an extrusion look. To do so, go to the effector page and adjust the control spline used here. Set the first point and move its tangent down. It's very nice. And we can adjust the right point as well. I will open it in a window. I will scale the, win the view down and we can control all of its points easily here. It's a mushroom look, I like it. We can add another effector here. We can adjust the extrude itself, decrease its steps down for instance and so on. Although the extrusion step value is different, the overall arms look is staying the same as before. Ok, let's add another effector. Set the extrude object like before, go to MoGraph menu and choose the step command again. Turn off the scale option now and we can adjust the position settings. Adjust the Z value, it moves steps in original polygons normal directions and we can move it uh, by this way. And don't forget, we can affect it by the effects of spline as well. So move the right point down and move its tangent up and we can prepare something like this. Check the last uh, ex uh, extrusion step, it's pressed inside the shape. It's a very nice looking effect. Reduce the Z value a bit, ok, and I will adjust it a bit more and I will use a separate window, ok. This is the second effector. In case you want to make these arms longer, just use the original exit object. Go to the transform tab and here is the Z movement value and play the animation. It works nicely. However, I would like to improve it a bit and add a random arms movement. Hmm. How can I do that? Ok, set the extrude object again and add another effector to the simulation. It should be a shader or random effector. I will choose a random because this effector uh, offers more than a random value. It can use an animated noise or turbulence and it will manage a random arms movement of the virus cell. Ok, go to effector step and change the random mode value here. Use the turbulence option. Ok, we have to adjust the transform setting still. Set the X and the Y to 0 and use uh, just the Z value. It's much much better than before, so let's play the animation. But it's too fast, so the effector tap again and reduce the animation speed while you're here. And play it again. It's still too fast. And it's almost perfect. It has much more organic movement than before. Scale the turbulent sample up. Ok, I like it. But I don't like the fact that it moves arm through inside the shape as well. We can check it from inside. Yes, we can see it here. Uh, we have to adjust it of course. Be sure the effector is still selected, go to the fall off tab and change the use shape settings here. Use the sphere option and invert the fall off influence using the in invert trigger. I will adjust the fall off size a bit and decrease the fall off value. It's much better than before. The arms don't go inside so much anymore. There is still a small movement, but it's not as critical as it was before. As you can see, it's almost perfect. So, let's use another random effector here. It will simulate a spherical movement of the arms. So, 
it will affect them in X and Y directions only. Create a new random effector. So the X you go to the effector tab and drag and drop and place the last effector we made here. So the effector itself and adjust its parameter settings. Set the Z value to zero and use some X and Y values instead. Okay, and continue to effect our step and we can adjust the use turbulence sample here. In other words, we have to adjust the speed and scale. This will generate a more random look. Okay, it's really very, very nice. And again, it's even better. We made a very nice and easily animated object and we haven't used any keyframe. I like the fact that it doesn't require any keyframe. We are almost at the end of the tutorial. Select the sphere object, use the Alt key and add a new subdivision surface object. Okay, and we can still adjust the object look a bit. Just by selecting an effector and adjusting its settings. But from a general point of view, the object itself, the object is done. I will adjust this scale value a bit. And we are almost done. As I said before, you can adjust all of the inputs uh, uh, the object has. We can add a new effector, we can adjust them, and so on. But before we end this lesson, we can prepare a virus invasion. Okay. So select the subdivision surface object, use the Alt key and create a new null object to place all affected effectors as children of the null. Rename the null, calling it virus. Use the MoGraph menu again and create a new clone object. Change the MoGraph mode, use grid array and use render instances. Increase the count settings and adjust the use size. Okay. Now use the same trick we have used already. So select the cloner and create a ran new random effector again. Use the same trick as before. Change the random mode and use a turbulence here to generate a random movement. Okay, now adjust the parameter settings using pretty high position values here. Go back to the effector step and decrease the animation speed value. It's very important. And increase the scale. Okay, and we can add some random rotation here. That's really all. The virus animation is done. We got a very nice movement, a very organic and fully animated virus object. And it doesn't need any keyframe. I like animation that do not require keyframes. The base tone of the simulation is the MoGraph Extrude object. It's a very nice and very helpful hidden deformer of Cinema 4D. And don't forget, the deformer can be affected by any effector you can think of, such as random, step, shader, and so on. Thank you for watching and see you at www.c4d.cz.